Hello there, welcome to another week in our garden. Now it's a nice dry morning. It's been a while since we've had some rain, but I do believe there's some due Saturday, so I'm looking forward to seeing the rain on Saturday. As I said, it's a lovely morning, but it's quite a chilly breeze on. Uh, today we're going to harvest the apples. As you can see, they're all ready now. Now I do believe that because it's been a really hot and sunny summer that's the reason why nearly all the apples are redder this year they're actually called spartan this one and the, you'll know when they're ready so if you get them and just lift them they should come away with a little bit of a top there, there should be a little bit of resistance if not they'd all fall off in the breeze but there you go you see that's how easy it is if you, if you can find one if you pull down they're quite firm but if you just lift them they'll come away see try and get them without damaging them and then we'll get them in the shed now if any that you pick is like that where it's been banging against the apple next to it that we put separate and we can slice that off and use that side straight away or better still send it for the granddaughter's horses they'll love that I'm going to pick a few I'll have to be careful because all the chickens have now come down and there's some underneath the tree so if I drop one it probably land on Rodney so I'll just pick one or two as you can see the pick beautiful and when we pick them we'll be storing these in the shed it's a good storing apple this one but what we'll do we'll pick them and then we'll put them in the shed and show you uh, they they do store for a few months providing you don't bruise them too much when you're picking them it's just a case of keep going you see I see there's one or two with a bit of a hole in but we'll check those as we put them out in the shed and we'll use those first now I shall pick the top and Diane will pick the bottom and I think she's got a few more to pick than me okay so we'll get them picked and then show you what we've got right these are the apples that we've picked it was very easy to pick with controlling the growth of the tree every year it makes life a lot easier the apples that are not quite so red are from the inside of the tree that haven't got so much sun perfectly good apples and these I don't know what they are actually but there was a tree we bought with a lost label and we couldn't resist the price so we've got that until we find out what they are we need to go and pull the beetroot because I've let the chickens down here and over the last couple of days I haven't been down here so much because I was full of cold and they've eaten all the tops of the beetroot so now I need to get this beetroot lifted and Diana will bottle the bottoms up okay now uh, that's the apples picked and we brought them using the little four-wheel trolley because it's far too heavy to carry now the beetroot as I said has been topped <laughs> with the chickens uh, so I'm going to get it lifted and put in a crate and we'll take it up and Diane will take the bottoms and, and bottle them okay as you can see they've had a good go at it but now we've got probably going to have some red eggs <laughs> but we'll lift them out anyway they've done no damage to the to the bottoms lot. the bottoms are perfectly all right it's the stem they have to be careful with the other thing this year i need to tell you is i've been absolutely inundated with white fly this is probably the worst year for white fly i can remember whether it's due to this long hot summer or the restrictions on our sprays now but the whole garden 
is covered in white fly and when it's windy I can actually see white fly coming from all directions on the wind so it seems everywhere in this area must be full of white fly but never mind but most of the crops are all right one or two of the brassicas especially the uh, the smaller ones have been so badly attacked I've had to grub those but it's not a problem we'll start again next year so we'll take them all up as you can see the the chickens behind me is eating them as fast as they can because they know I'm going to pick them just pull them out they'll be fine now the tomatoes they're still producing tomatoes but with it being so late we are absolutely full of tomatoes now anybody who wants the tomatoes the red or the green for making the chutneys in the village I should put the word out and then they'll either say they want them and then we can pick them and take them up the village okay right so I'll pick these through and put them in this crate and then I'll come back to you that's the beetroot now harvested we do have another batch further up the garden that we'll pick when they get a little bit bigger than marbles as baby beetroot we'll have to get those as soon as they're at that size if we leave them too long the winter will come in too much and shut it down anyway now we'll just have a look at these squashes that we've still got down here and see how they're progressing now I've taken the arch down and left this side up because of these butternut squashes I think we're at the stage now if I do they're not they're not quite ready but there's nothing coming up these stems no more as you can see the stems are finished now so I'm going to cut them off with a good stem on and put them in the shed to mature and then I can finish taking the arch down okay I'm going to cut it right back here look take all the rubbish off there you are take that off they aren't they're a good colour and we'll just take those you can see this one you see there's nothing it's not even attached to the plant no more as you can see they are nice and ripe now so we'll take these out there you go leave this on they're a good weight now this one that's not quite so ripe as you can see but the stems is gone so we might as well take it as leave it up there if we get a big frost it'll kill it anyway probably one of the ones we'll use first again it's nice and ripe the stems are all solid it takes some cutting actually that's good and then we'll just pick these up these have been grown with the squashes so they've not made a lot of size about them but they're a good weight and they won't be wasted they're good they're good uh, butternuts they are that one I won't I'll leave that that'll go to the compost again you see they're just coming off on their own now so they're ready nice and ripe they'll do they're fine we'll just go over and look at the other frame now and show you how they're getting on now these are the other butternut squashes as you can see the colouring nicely the ripening but can you see where they're still green on the stem so these are still fine yet you see there's a couple here the huge butternuts but these aren't ready yet and they're still there's still moisture travelling through these these uh, stems now the leaves haven't died back or anything on these so I'm going to leave these for a little while you see these are just beginning to turn now and the stems are 
beginning to brown off a bit. This one is quite a way behind colour wise. Now we should keep an eye on the weather and if it's forecasted to be quite a, a frost I should come down and fleece this. We've got that heavy fleece that we got from gardening naturally so I just put the heavy fleece on just to protect them because they're up in the air they, there'll be a bit of a wind chill factor on them. Look at the size of that squash. My God, that ought to really, I'll have to put a little cradle under it to support it. We're going to leave these as long as we dare. We should keep an eye on the weather and they should be all right. But I do believe we've got a little bit of sunshine coming next week which help ripen them. But while the plant's growing so well, we'll leave them. So we've got the apples and the squashes loaded on the trolley. I actually took the beetroot up because we couldn't get any more on it. Now we're just on our way up. We've got two crates of the squashes and pumpkin and we're going to take them to Murray's next door and he's going to pop them up the village for us. So they'll be ready for the Macmillan coffee morning tomorrow. It might raise a little bit of money for a good cause. Okay, so we'll take them up and we'll see you tomorrow. Bye now. Hello there, Friday today. Now we're starting today in the fruit cage. Just to give you an update what I've been up to. See, we've lifted the frame a little, especially at this end and lowered that end. So I can actually put the gate in the top. The path is in as you know. Starting to get the strawberry plants mulched up ready for the growing season. This side I've put the compost and manure on but I can't dig it in now until we get some rain. It's far too dry to, to even get the fork in the ground at the moment. Up at this end of the fruit cage where the larger fruit bushes are I, again, I can't do anything until we get some rain. It's far too dry. Now, this is the compost I'm using. This is out the bins. I'm having to empty the bins because the first bin wants to turn into the second bin. But the, as I said, the ground's far too dry to put it on. So I've had to put it in these bags for now and then we'll transfer it from the bags to the garden. As you can see, it's absolutely brilliant compost. I thought this year, with it being such a hot, dry summer, that we wouldn't make very good compost, but it's actually made some of the best compost I've seen for a long, long time. That's all the compost from the garden. A little bit of horse manure in layers as it went up and it really has made an excellent compost. It's sweet and it's ready to go. The only thing is we need some rain to get it done. Now the sun is just about to peep through. 19 degrees today, very, very dry though. Now we've been asked to do a few lavender cuttings so we'll pop in the shed and do those. And I'll also show you everything that's in store in the shed now, okay? Now uh, we're in the shed now, which is resembles a green grocer's at the moment but it's good storage it's a good story shed it's frost proof and it's got plenty of light coming in on the west side so it's fine now i'll let diane just go round and show you with the camera what we've got in store in here now these are the pumpkins that we're going to do for carving with the granddaughters i think diane's doing some and Murray next door is going to have a couple as well. Now I always store my apples in the sheds. I used to do this when I was a child. That was a long time ago. And it's exactly the same as what we used to do it then. You just space them out in a frost free place with a little bit of light. And then you can just cast your eye down them every couple of days and take any that's not quite right. A few of those green apples that we don't really know the name of, there, 
what we picked yesterday and then at the end there's a few brownies that my neighbour Tanya gave me we'll use those straight in for cooking then the potatoes we store in nursery crates under sacks to keep the light off there's three boxes there there's three boxes here and two more at the top I cover them with sacks and as I've said before I go through them at least once every two weeks just to make sure they're all right at the moment they're fine what you'll find is with potatoes that if you've got a bad one in there when you come in the shed in the mornings you can you pick that smell up of a rotten potato and that's the time to get in there and find it once you know the smell you'll be able to do it same with the apples you'll know the smell of things when they're not quite right now the the onions are sitting well I think they're easy to check you just give them a spin and you can see if anything wants taking off a little bit of garlic still in here that'll be fine hanging up like that you can see that dye's made a way through one string nearly already the onions nicely stored with the garlic the garlic's been used look we used four off that one already but they'll sit here until they're required perfectly all right now these are the ornamental gourds these are actually gourds but they're the gourds that were actually cross-pollinated we think with this spinning gourd and the patty pan and it's made these so they are ornamental now we'll use them for decoration over the autumn they're very nice the spinning gourds are what the children used to have years ago for spinning i'll just try and spin you one there you are and i think it was a competition to see who could keep them spinning the longest they make very nice when they're dried out and they've been cut open and little bits of robin etc put inside them they make absolutely beautiful christmas decorations for the tree the seed of these come from TK in the USA we well, thank you for those TK very nice and the girls will take it up this autumn and see what decorations they can make out of them yes. these are now the rest of the squashes that we've got left as you know we've given some away Gemma's going to have some Diane's had some at the house we've sent quite a few up to the village for their coffee morning to raise funds and this is what's left for now now you've seen what we've got in storage in here it absolutely smells beautiful now we're going to do some lavender cuttings we've been asked out to do them not difficult won't take as long they've got six I've just taken off the lavenders up at the house now if you see here I've got the new growth at the top and then a little bit of woody growth at the bottom so we're going to take the cutting with a little bit of this woody growth at the bottom okay the tops won't give much on these so there's no need to cut leaves but we will remove some of these leaves down here so let's remove some of these leaves I'll just pin it down with my finger sharp knife don't forget so do be careful just take those off you see and then I'll show you how it's done now you see these old leaves here they're, they're not doing anything there so we'll take those off in fact it might be easy just to pull them off I think yes pull these off they are not producing anything now look and there you go let me show you that so there's the cutting with those little bits of leaves cut off the sides I'm actually going to cut it there and then put it in a little bit of water a little bit of rooting powder and put it in some very 
very sandy compost okay so let's take that off quite hard so we just dip it in the water a little bit of powder not too much just bang it off and then put it in very very sandy compost and then just tighten it down these are some there's only three here that I took oh very early season same way same way of taking the cutting and I brought them down because I forgot to get them potted so I brought them into the shed to make sure that I do pot them when you do pot them on always remember that lavenders really really need a open compost so it drains quite easily and not a lot of goodness in it but I'll pot those later but I'll leave them in the shed as a reminder right let's do another one same way look it's woody at the bottom and soft at the top so we need that little bit of wood down there so it's a semi hardwood cutting yeah so we'll take those off There you go, we'll do it the same. You see these leaves that are not doing any good, like they're brown and they're, they're not doing anything now, so we'll just carefully take those off. We'll take that one off as well. What we'll do, we've exposed one, two, three, four nodes there, so what we'll do, we'll cut underneath that leaf node there, look, and then we'll use that as the cutting. Now remember, it's quite hard, it's woody. But you in the water and not too much powder but just enough and then a hole don't make your hole too deep so that the cutting is what you call hung cutting then there'll be a hole underneath it and it won't root and just put take it down quite firm just one more you can see it before you start it looks quite busy on the stem so we need to really know what, where we're going to cut, so just take those, those little shoots off. We'll do it nice and steady together, this one. Then that one, look. This one. There we go. So we've exposed two there, look, then we've got, we've still got a little bit of wood growth there and then soft growth there. So we'll do the same, right? if I turn it round, pull these leaves off that are not doing any good. Remember not to, not to break the cutting while you're doing it. That'll do, I think, on there. And then we've exposed two nodes, look. One there, one there. So we'll take the cutting under that node and then we'll get it in the compost. Just a straight cut and it's quite sharp. <laughs> it's quite hard. Remember the R wood, so have a good sharp knife and do be careful. We just pop it in the water and then we put a bit of water on just help the, the hormone powder. There's plenty on there, no? we don't need that much. And then in it goes and then press down fairly tight for these it's blue lavender all the lavenders the papillons and the blues all can have the cuttings taken at this time of year as hard semi hardwood cuttings remember semi hardwood got a little bit of hardwood then the soft bit at the top in the spring we we'll do exactly the same, but we can use all the soft, which will root a bit quicker. Now, if you can give it a little bit of bottom meat, they'll, they'll just root quicker. These, I shall do what we got. We got six, and what I should do, I should just take two off one of these, just to fill the tray. So we've got ten. And then I keep them in this shed 
against the window they'll be fine. I'll just pop the label in, lavender blue, and that's it. That's ten little lavender plants done. I'll put them on the tray and get some water in from the bottom and then I'll pop them near the window in the shed and they'll root in no time at all. Okay. So that's it for this week. Hope you've enjoyed it. Many, many thanks for subscribing. We do appreciate it. And again, thank you very much for watching. And hopefully we'll see you next week. Bye now.